Hello and welcome back to the Toy Office. Uh, before I begin this episode, I want to point something out. These two guys over here, the Decepticon clones from last week's episode, uh, they're coming back in Earthrise. Uh, I just saw a post from Cybertron and TFW 2005 that they are getting an Earthrise release. So I uh, want to make a quick correction to last week's episode. They're worth it in Earthrise. By all means, get it. I love them. They're great. Uh, if the Autobot clones get a, a re-release, if, if you're interested in getting all of them, go for it. But I think that these two are the, the real gems of the collection. Anywho, so this week, uh, I want to do something a little bit different. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, actually, since before I even had the idea for Toy Office itself, and I just wanted to do a, gener a general like toy review channel. So while I was at the outlet store, I picked up uh, some Godzillas. Now, these come from the Jack Specific line. Uh, they're three and a half inches tall, uh, very limited articulation, some head swivel, a little bit in the arm, a little bit in the legs, and the tail can do this and this, uh, which is mainly because you have to assemble it out of box. Uh, there's a little bit of dry brushing on the chest with some whitish paint, and his teeth are painted with, oh, it's actually pretty nice. He's got a little bit of a, zoom in there for a second, a little bit of yellow paint right there. Not terrible, uh, especially considering I paid uh, six bucks for a two pack of these, but that is also at an outlet store, meaning it's probably half the price it was originally. So I'm guessing that these were around 12 bucks. Uh, I checked real quick before the episode and I found them for $30 through Toy Wiz. So who knows? Uh, overall, it's cast in a greenish gray plastic, uh, greenish black plastic. Works okay. Uh, it's a competent Godzilla from the movies. That's really all it is. It's, it does what it does. It stands nice. It looks good on a shelf. Well, it looks okay on a shelf. So they had two other Godzillas, Burning Godzilla and Godzilla Charging His Fire Breath. Let's just get those better in picture. Uh, Godzilla Charging His Atomic Fire Blast looks pretty much the same as this guy, except he has some blue paint on his back, so we'll just put him over to the side. Uh, but Burning Godzilla looks like he, uh, he was dropped in a bag of Cheetos and shook around. Not great. Uh, not great. It's actually kind of funny because you can tell that they did this the cheapest way possible um, because there's dry brushing here. If you look at the foot on this side, it's totally devoid. It's completely and utterly devoid of any paint. And you can actually see a hard line <laughs> where they, uh, they stopped the dry brushing. Uh, I think you can probably see the same thing on these guys because they also have leg dry brushing, but it's Less pronounced because it's not cheetah orange. So these came; these were not the only kaiju that were available in those two packs. Uh, each of these came with its own counterpart. And I'm going to start from Burning Godzilla and go that way. Uh, Burning Godzilla came with Mothra. Whew, boy. Um, not really much to say about this Mothra. It's uh, the movie Mothra with these plastic wings that have a sticker on them that is so shiny that I could practically see myself in it. A um, little bit of articulation in the wings. A little bit. I think they're on ball joints. Let's see. Yeah, they're on ball joints. Um, not really much you can do with it because it doesn't like to stand up. Uh, and you kind of are just going to be doing that. But to be fair, the original Mothra from the original series pretty much only did that anyways. So what have you. There was also a Rodan. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Rodan makes an appearance in King of the Monsters as one of, as basically the star scream of Kaiju. It's really great. Uh, one of my favorite things from the movie, not going to lie. Uh, he does have a little bit of head articulation, not much. And man, that's really scary. A little bit of leg motion. And he's got some wing action going on here. Uh, if you look, you can see that they kind of did a wash on his wings. Much better. This looks much better than the Mothra does. Uh, but it does have the difficulty of one... Oh! Okay. 
All right, so uh, I was about to say that this guy has trouble standing, uh, and he does, but uh, apparently I found the magic sauce to make him stand while doing this video. All right, not terrible. Uh, coming look at the back, he uh, he does have some more of that wash action going on. He's mostly he's entirely cast in this reddish plastic. Um, not terrible. Could be worse. Could be better. But once again, basically three dollars for him. So it's not like I paid a ton. Now. For those of you who have seen King of the Monsters, you'll know there's a bunch of kaiju that appear in that movie. However, only four were Toho-inspired, uh, Toho-based, Toho-licensed properties. Uh, Godzilla, Mothra, Rodan, and Godzilla's greatest foe, King Ghidorah. Man, I wish it wasn't King Ghidorah because it would be so much funnier if it was like... If it was like uh, Mogura or something, but that's just not what happened. Um, so, a few things about this. He's got some of that wash that uh, Rodan has through here. Actually, it really makes the wings look nice. And it makes me wish that they hadn't put them on these swivels. Because it would be fine if he just stood like this. And, like, you know, you didn't have to worry about flopping around. But, I, I don't know. I guess they had to add a play feature whatever um the faces are okay uh pretty decent detailing the eyes I, it's kind of hard to make this out on camera they do have bits of white in there the faces the, the tongues are painted pink and it's got some teeth action going on with a little bit of white uh the legs can move around a little bit the legs can move around a little bit and there's a bit of a swivel in the next, in different locations, mind you. Uh, coming around to the back, really, actually, this mold for the the wings is phenomenal, like absolutely gorgeous. And then they ruin it with this this articulation here. They should have just made it a solid piece, but you know, uh, that probably would have been difficult for them, I guess. Although they could have just cast this, glued a hole in here, and plugged it in, because I've seen them do that in Bandai products but what have you. Uh, additionally, he's got these two little tails. Uh, they come in the box detached. And uh, so fun story, all of these say that they're X pieces with the number of pieces that they're including. And um, this guy really literally can't stand. Uh, the wings are way too heavy. The only way that I've been even able to come close to making him stand is to have him like that. So let's just kind of put him off to the side. And he fell. So in America, we have this weird thing, or rather, I should say, Jack Pacific has this weird thing, where they insist on, like, adding additional stuff for Godzilla to, and his kaiju friends to interact with. Um, the problem is, so uh, each of these said, so the, the Godzilla and Rodan set, uh, this one, the Mothra and Godzilla set, and the Ghidorah and Godzilla set all said that they came with X pieces with Rodan and Mothra's being seven, and uh, Godzilla and King Ghidorah being nine. So, a uh, few things about that. Uh, Ghidorah counts as three pieces. Each of the Godzilla counts as two. All right? So, for those of you at home who are doing the math, three plus two is five. So, what are those four remaining pieces, and what are the four main remaining pieces in the three packs? The seven packs. Um... It's kind of disappointing. <laughs> so they come with dioramas. Yes. Very good. Now you might be saying, hey, John, there's only three dioramas there. Yes. Because there's only three dioramas that they come with. And none of them had all three. But if you bought them all, you get all three. Um, not to mention... Uh, each of these bits ca counts as a piece. So this piece of plastic counts as a piece. This counts as a piece. And you might say, oh, that looks okay, I guess. It's cardboard. It's cardboard with a bit of photo glued onto the front of it. I'm pretty much throwing these out as soon as this video is over. So just to let you know. Um, but for the most part, eh. Um, I do take offense to these Godzilla toys a little bit. 
Um, I wanted to get these because I actually really like the three and a half core, three and a half inch scale for Godzilla. Um, although I think my other collections three and three quarters, but whatever. Um, so recent ishly, they released this King, you know, this uh, Godzilla from uh, this is Godzilla versus Biollante, and this is the Rodan from the Hesse era. Phenomenal looking toys. Uh, just to kind of get to what I was trying to say before for King Ghidorah over there, uh, they cast this into three separate parts and basically glued it together or friction molded it together. Um, and it looks really good. I think it's really fun. I don't think a toy this size needs a ton of articulation, personally. Uh, I don't even think this Rodan has head articulation. No, because he's a vinyl figure. Uh, likewise, this Godzilla has no head articulation. A little bit of hand, a little bit of leg, and nothing. In, uh, maybe a little rotation in the tail because you have to connect it. But that's about it. Um, the price per figure for these guys is about 8 bucks. The price per figure for these guys, uh, I'm assuming at release, was about 6 bucks. And personally, I don't think it's a really good trade-off. The PVC plastic looks better than the ABS, in my personal opinion. Uh, the paint apps are just generally better. Uh, it's a better use of your money if you're a fan of Godzilla figures. But not only that, um, but there's like even older... These are This is one of the gacha, Gachapon Godzillas. This is Gachapon by Alante. Picked it up a while back uh, because I'll never be able to afford an SH Monster Arts Biolante. So this is my Biolante. Um, but even this one has some like really fun articulation, but not at the cost of being unable to, you know, be fun and be interesting. Um, this standing here looks so much more interesting than any of these three. But the fact of the matter is, like, there's more molding, there's more mold detail in these than there is in this guy. Uh, oh, pretty much the same. But it's kind of ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, I, I I can see why these ended up in an outlet store. That's all I'm going to say. I also saw uh, a Farrah and a Mercy there, and I kind of regret not picking those up instead of these guys. But what are you going to do? So the other thing I picked up at the outlet store was this... Um, Cyber Battalion, Evergreen, I don't know. It doesn't really have a line. Authentics, uh, Grimlock, pretty decent little Grimlock. Fairly competently executed for $10. Um, his face is pretty cool. He's channeling some IDW energy there with the kind of teeth-like protrusions while still maintaining his raw Grimlockness. Uh, the... Autobot sigil is tampographed, it appears. Um, and the plastic is, you know, fairly nice. A little, a little bit on the um, slick side. But there's a few good paint apps, uh, some nice silver detailing on the waist and all that stuff. And, you know, he's got the standard Grimlock kibble and the standard Grimlock hollow tail legs. It's actually a fairly basic, fairly standard transformation for Grimlock. Like, this is... Um, this is actually a pretty representative version of Grimlock uh, for kids. Um, I think that this particular Grimlock is a great kid's toy, personally. Um, and if you want to see a reference, the Power of the Primes Grimlock, which I actually like quite a bit. I haven't talked about it. Um, I like it. I like the crunchy bits. I like the, the stickers. I like this whole... I, I like this Grimlock, okay? Um, but... If you can't get your hands on this Grimlock, this is actually a pretty decent Grimlock um, on a shelf. Uh, clearly, if you spin them around, the differences are kind of apparent. He's got a little bit more filling, and this guy doesn't. Uh, but whatever. Uh, but you should notice that they're about the same height. This guy was $25 at release, and this was $10 at release. So, eh, whatever. So this Grimlock is fairly well articulated. Uh, ball joints at the elbows and shoulders. No waist action, a little bit of a knee action, and a ball joint at the hip. The head is also on a ball joint. In terms of transformation, it's basically G1 Grimlock. Uh, you spin the arms around, like so. Uh, the backpack likes to fall apart on you because for whatever reason it does. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not great. You pop this bit up, 
and over. Spin these down and then pull the chest pieces around. Put the head down and there's his head. For the legs, you're going to just fold them up like so. And that becomes his tail. And there we go. We got Grimlock. Um, not awful, I'll say. Uh, definitely pulling some cues from classic Grimlock, uh, especially with the head design and the panel lining. Uh, I think with a little bit of panel lining, this might look really good, or a wash. This might look phenomenal. Uh, but I'm going to say this. Uh, for most adult collectors, I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, for most people who uh, collect the things that I collect which is Chug and Legends class. This guy doesn't really have a place in your collection. Um, I definitely recommend the Power of the Primes Grimlock before this one. Uh, but that being said, I think it's a great Grimlock, like a great first Grimlock for kids. Um, now, I'm saying maybe in the 3 to 5 range, this would be pretty good. Uh, there is the Cyberverse Grimlock, but I think this Grimlock is actually a, a pretty decent one. So I think I'm going to be giving this Grimlock away. Um, because I don't need it for my collection. So I'm going to be giving this to uh, my niece and nephew, Sophie and Emmett, who wanted to hear their name shouted on the show. <laughs> so hi, guys. Uh, you guys are going to get this whenever I see you next. Uh, and I have another one for you guys, too, and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, so I had a bit of a weird experience today going to the dollar store. Uh, picked up something pretty decent. Uh, kind of okay. And something absolutely terrible. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy. Like, because he can't stand by himself. So, like, where do I put him? Maybe I'll get some st sticky tack for him. So, that was a bit of a weird episode. Uh, not one that I'm going to do all that frequently. Mainly because uh, I don't really like buying stuff that doesn't fit in my collection. Uh, this was something I was picking, planning on picking up for my niece and nephew to begin with. Uh, so that just kind of happened, and I saw it, so I got it. Uh, and then these guys, I thought I could, you know, represent King of the Monsters with something decently cheap, and it turns out I was wrong. So, whatever. Uh, anywho, if you enjoyed the show, be sure to like, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure you're nice to other people, and remember, it's okay to bring a toy to work, and even if you're working at home, it's still fine to have some toys around. Uh, until next time, bye!